Welcome back. So we're talking about the Fourier series and how you can approximate periodic functions using an infinite sum of cosines and sine waves. And in the last lecture, I showed you that you could approximate uh, sharp hat functions, this kind of triangular hat function using uh, cosine and sine series quite accurately. And now what I'm going to show you is what can go wrong. Okay, so this is going to be a Python code to walk you through something called Gibbs phenomenon when you compute the Fourier series of a uh, discontinuous function. So here I'm defining this top hat function from 0 to 10. Uh, the size of the domain doesn't really matter. But what matters here is, as opposed to our previous example, which was continuous, right, this value continuously varied across this triangular hat function, in our new top hat function, the function is discontinuous at these two points. It discontinuously jumps from 0 to 1, and then it jumps back down from 1 to 0 discontinuously at those two points. And this is going to be a real problem for the Fourier series. Okay, So if I included all infinitely many terms in my Fourier series, I could perfectly approximate that function, even with uh, a countable number of discontinuities, I could still approximate it. But the minute that we truncate our series now, now we're going to add up the first hundred uh, modes of, of sines and cosines, we're going to get a really interesting numerical artifact of this approximation. Or actually, it's not even a numerical artifact, it's a real artifact of this, this approximation. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through this code. Uh, this is very similar to the previous code. What we're doing is we're de defining a domain. Uh, in the middle half of that domain, we set the value equal to 1, everywhere else at 0. And then we compute the first 100 uh, Fourier coefficients, the first 101 uh, coefficients a, k, and b, k that are multiplying these cosines and sines. And we do this by taking the inner product of our function defined on this interval with those cosines and sines also defined on that same interval. And because this is being done in a computer, these are not analytic functions. What we're doing is we're defining our function on a vector of x positions. So f is a vector of data. And my cosine and sine waves are also vectors of data, and we're computing their inner product, this, this uh, inner product here, just by taking the dot product of those vectors, the f vector and my cosine and sine vectors. Okay? And that's how we're getting these a, k, and b, k coefficients down here. And then we're going to add up those first 101 sines and cosines in that proper mixture, and I'm going to plot you uh, the original function and the Fourier series approximation. Okay? And when we do that, this is what we find. We find, uh, so in the background underneath, you can see there's kind of the true hat function that I want to approximate. But then this blue curve is the Fourier series approximation with the first 100 sines and cosines. And although it gets the rough trend uh, of a top hat function, you see this really interesting ringing phenomenon uh, at the corners, at these discontinuous points. Okay? And this is known as Gibbs's phenomenon, Gibbs phenomenon. Gibbs phenomenon, where at these points of discontinuity, it actually does a really good job in the middle where the function's continuous, but at these points of discontinuity, you get this interesting ringing behavior. And this is something you really have to look out for when you're numerically approximating Fourier series. So again, I'm going to remind you, if I added up all infinitely many sines and cosines of all frequencies, this would go away. I would have a perfect approximation of my uh, discontinuous top hat function. But the moment we truncate our Fourier series and we chop it off at, let's say, 100 modes, now we're going to get this interesting ringing Gibbs phenomenon. Okay. And this is, this is just pure error. This is an error in approximating the true top hat function. And the reason I think, um, th the way I want to explain this to you is the following. So the Fourier series can approximate these, uh, these continuous functions. When you have a discontinuous function, sines and cosines are, are continuous, right? So sines and cosines are kind of smooth, continuous functions. They don't have sharp corners or jumps and things like that. And so to approximate something that has a discontinuous jump, essentially what, what this means is that this discontinuous jump contains all frequencies, all infinitely many higher and higher and higher frequency sines and cosines need to be added up in a perfect mixture to approximate this, uh, this steep front here, this cliff, where, where the function jumps from 0 to 1. 
And if I truncate my, and, and when they add up to form that cliff, the ups and the downs of the different frequency signs and cosines are kind of canceling out perfectly to just walk up instantaneously and then stay flat. And when I truncate that Fourier series, in this case at 100 modes, I'm not getting that perfect cancellation of sines and cosines that I would, that I would have. And so now you see the artifacts uh, because of that imperfect cancellation. I need all of the terms in my series to get rid of these Gibbs phenomenon. And this is something you're always going to see when you approximate discontinuous functions using a finite truncated Fourier series. So, for example, if I do this numerically, um, you know, in, in Python, then I'm, I'm going to get this Gibbs phenomenon unless I use exactly the same number of modes as I, as I have um, points in my, in my vector, okay? And that, that's actually the only uh, catch here is that if I had, let's say, n equals uh, 1024 points, in my discrete representation of this data, then if I had 512 or n over 2 modes, this Gibbs phenomenon would look like it went away. I would, I would have a, a Fourier series approximation on this grid that is, you know, is a perfect representation of my function. But what would happen if you zoomed in between your grid, you would see this, this Gibbs phenomenon, and essentially what you would find is that you were just sampling this only at the points uh, where it intersected exactly uh, with, with this function, okay? So we're going to get more into this later. I'll, I'll tell you more about Gibbs phenomenon and especially how this relates to the fast Fourier transform and the discrete Fourier transform, which is how you actually compute this on data efficiently. Uh, but I just wanted to point out that this is a, a big kind of issue, okay? And even though we showed that you can compute the Fourier series of this triangular hat function, if I use the Fourier series to approximate the derivative of this, which is a, a top hat function, then the derivative is going to have this Gibbs phenomenon. So, so that's something that you're, you're always going to have to look out for is this kind of ringing Gibbs phenomenon. But now you'll, you'll know what it is when you see it. Okay? And then the last thing I want to show you uh, here is you can turn this into a movie where you iteratively increase the order of this approximation from k equals 1 to 2 to 3 all the way up to 100 and you can see how the Gibbs phenomenon evolves. So this is kind of a cool movie here. Let's see if I can play it. Okay, so it's going to start over in a minute. Okay, so this is the Gibbs phenomenon uh, as you increase the order of your approximation. Uh, from, from low order, from a very coarse approximation to a very high approximation. You can see in the low order, it starts off just being kind of one cosine function that's a, a poor approximation. And as you add and add and add more cosines, you see that this Gibbs phenomenon starts to localize out at the corners. So it's doing a better and better job in the middle, and that Gibbs phenomenon, that ringing, is localizing out to those points of discontinuity. And if you increased this n higher, uh, again, to, to the number of grid points divided by two, eventually it would look like it goes away and it's a perfect approximation. But if you doubled your resolution and zoomed in, you'd see that they're still ringing. You're just aliasing that ringing. Okay, great. So something to look out for. Um, and soon we're going to start talking about the fast Fourier transform and the discrete Fourier transform. Again, those are how to efficiently compute these uh, in a computer. And, and we'll, we'll use these to approximate partial differential equations. And remember, when you're approximating derivatives, you have to look out for, for Gibbs phenomenon. Okay, thank you.